is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 honda prologue courtesy of sioka honda of hanover in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are this one today because this is all new for the 2024 model year and this is honda's really first attempt at an electric suv so i'm quite excited to be in this one and that's actually due in part because of their teaming up with gm on this one because this is essentially the same platform the same battery and several other components as well as the blazer ev and cadillac lyric so that's pretty cool i actually do like the cadillac lyric so yeah i'm definitely looking forward to this this one so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 honda prologue first one being the ex starting at 47,400. you got the touring going for 51,700. and lastly the elite being the one we are in today starting at $57,900 but as you can imagine with those three trim levels there's actually two different configurations available for this one in terms of the power plant you got a single electric motor and that's going to be paired up with the front wheel drive configuration that puts out 212 horsepower 236 pound feet of torque giving you a 0 to 60 of approximately 6.7 seconds there as far as the range goes it's actually pretty impressive coming in at 296 miles of range so I like that as far as the 20 to 80 percent charge that can be done in 35 minutes in case you were curious but then there is that other power plant and that is going to be the dual electric motor one that of course powers all four wheels that's the all-wheel drive configuration putting out 288 horsepower 333 pound-feet of torque 0 to 60 time for that one 6.1 seconds that's plenty impressive there with the range coming in at 281 miles for the EX and touring but then 273 miles for the elite that we have today all right so before we do any kind of fun acceleration here in the prologue i did want to mention to you guys the drive mode it is singular it is a sport driving mode and it is on the elite trim level only and it's kind of hidden as well i would think it would either be in somewhere around the cup holders here like it typically is in other vehicles or on the infotainment screen but it's not it's actually located by the driver's side left knee so i almost didn't even look there but that is where it's located so Anyways, that sport driving mode will adjust things like the throttle response, the steering feel, the, uh, the braking responsiveness as well, believe it or not. And it's going to add some red ambient lighting actually as well. So anyways, now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the prologue here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 prologue here up to speed. All right, found our straight away here in three, two, one, go. It's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Dang, that is quick. I didn't even know I was going that fast. Good grief. This thing is so ridiculously quiet during that acceleration. That is a heck of an acceleration. It's kind of stealth-like. Like, you don't even realize you're going as quick as you are. That was plenty. That was fun. <laughs> that was kind of fun, man. Absolutely no issues there. But anyways, I kind of like it sounded like an airplane takeoff too. That's the other cool thing. It kind of reminded me of the Ford Mustang Mach-E. That sounded like an airplane takeoff too when I first hit the gas. Not all electric cars do, but some do. And the ones that do are super cool. So I like that. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And braking is probably one of the unique elements of the prologue i'll tell you why in a second here but anyways up front you're going to find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13.6 inch solid rear discs uh as far as braking feel goes it's fine definitely instantly bites on the firmer side of things instantly brings you to a stop but of course with the being an electric vehicle there is that one pedal drive and the one pedal drive really is done differently than any other electric vehicle I've ever tested. So get this, there's one paddle shifter on the steering wheel, not two, because a lot of times you'll use their uh, paddle shifters to do the regenerative braking um, on the right side and the left side to kind of adjust how much of that you want at any given time. But there's just one paddle shifter, it's on the left side and you press it on the upper portion or the lower portion to adjust that regenerative braking, but you actually hold it down it doesn't adjust it like permanently like if i wanted one pedal drive 
I, I don't actually have to hit the brakes at all or anything like that. Of course, with one pedal drive, you don't have to hit the brakes, but I just hold down on that left paddle shifter. Like I'm going down a hill right now and it is completely bringing me to a dead stop by just holding down the paddle shifter. Now I originally thought it was to adjust it. So like I was pressing it like one thing at a time and it's just like <laughs> like it was just wanting to stop. But I found the way to actually stop it with one pedal drive is you have to actually hold it down, which is kind of different. I don't know if I like that or not, but uh, that's how to stop this thing without actually using the brakes. There you go. Anyways, then touching on suspension and handling. Although the platform was barred from GM, Honda does claim that they've played a big role in the suspension tuning. So independent front and rear suspension, of course, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine, actually, in my short little test drive here today. Hanover's got a lot of road imperfections, and this has definitely been absorbing them quite well. So I do like the ride quality. I will say that absolutely no issues for me. Uh, as far as steering feel goes, we're still in that sport driving mode. Uh, I like it. It's definitely on the firmer side of things. Now, I will say the steering feel does feel like a Honda. Honda traditionally weights their steering a little bit more on the heavier side of things, which I personally love. I love a heavy steering feel. It's nothing too crazy. It's not like Tesla. Tesla's got a ridiculously heavy steering feel, which I really love, but it's definitely weighted on the heavier side of things. It's not like a Toyota BZ4X or anything like that. That's a little bit looser than this. So I love the steering feel on this. Absolutely no complaints from me. As far as cabin noise goes, keep in mind it is super rainy and wet out today. We're going about 43 miles per hour right now. So I'll let you guys be the judge of that. But I can tell there is definitely some acoustic laminated windows in this thing because this is an incredibly serene cabin. And that's typically what you find with electric vehicles because they're so quiet to start with. So yeah, absolutely no issues there. Touching on rear visibility, that's the, one of the first things I noticed. I was like, wow, that's a small window, man. Like because of the shape of the prologue, the rear visibility is not gonna be as good as let's say a Honda Pilot, but it's something that you get used to. I'm always gonna say that because that's what Camaro owners and 370Z owners always tell me in the comments section that you get used to it. So it's not gonna be as good as some of the competition, but I'm sure it's perfectly fine. I love that tiny little rear window wiper. That's probably the smallest rear window wiper I've ever seen out of all my reviews. It's so dinky. <laughs> it's, it's cool, man. One of the cool perks about having this Elite trim though today, uh, in terms of visibility at least, is we not only get rain sensing windshield wipers, which is only available on the Elite, but we also get a head up display I'm looking at right now as well, assisting with forward visibility. So I am looking at uh, my speed, speed limit, and safety features projected up onto my windshield. It's plenty bright, so I'm a huge fan of that. It definitely helps the driver keep their eyes on the road a lot better. So. Uh, I uh, can better enjoy the drive of this one, so yeah. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Honda Prologue. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Honda Prologue finished in mercury silver metallic. And yes, if you hear that sound, that is the umbrella above me here because it is raining out. So anyways, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number three, indicating that the Honda Prologue is built and assembled in Mexico, in case you were curious. But starting up front, the front end does look like a Honda. I will start by saying that. So I like I like the front end Honda-ness, I guess you could say. You do have front air curtains to the bottom two corners as well, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better air dynamics. LED headlights to the sides with LED daytime running lights. Get the automatic feature with them, along with automatic high beams as well. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So you gotta love that. LED fog lights then down below, that is gonna come on the Touring and Elite. So you do not get those on the EX trim level. So I did wanna emphasize that, but really no front grille again, because this is a uh, electric vehicle, of course. So that makes complete sense, but I actually like the way the front end looks. It looks pretty darn good. So that pretty much rounds out the front end of the prologue. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, and so now since we are around to the side of this one, roof rails will come standard on the Touring and Elite trim levels. Rear privacy glass does come standard for all trims across the board. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are finished in gloss black for all trim levels. They will be power adjustable. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals and mirror projected welcome lights for the elite trim level only. So that is pretty darn cool. Um, I did want to mention something. A lot of times with SUVs, you do find matte black kind of side skirts and fender surrounds. 
But thankfully, with the Prologue, they are black, but they're gloss black. So I actually don't mind that for that particular reason. So they didn't go cheap on the finishes, so I like that. And the gloss black does tie in well with the door handles and the side mirrors. So all of it looks pretty darn good together. But taking a look at the wheel setup then, 19 by 8.5 inch alloys for the EX and the Touring trims. But then those do get bumped up for our Elite, coming in at 21 by 9.5 inch alloys for the Elite trim. So not only larger wheels, but wider wider wheels there as well. So I did want to recognize that, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Very sleek looking design here. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, this is probably my favorite look on the new Prologue. So all the way to the top, you do have that body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, the wimpiest little rear window wiper that I have ever seen. Um, <laughs> it's just funny. I don't know. I don't mind it, but LED taillights, they are super bright. They do come standard for all trim levels across the board. And another cool little added touch here, instead of the Honda logo, they have Honda spelled out horizontally. So that's something different that you typically don't see from Honda vehicles. So I kind of like that. You got that new E insignia found on the right hand side of that rear tailgate, signifying that this is an electric vehicle, of course. Got the prologue badging on the left. And of course, since this is an electric vehicle, there's no exhaust. So typically I'll do an exhaust clip here, but yeah, that is not gonna happen because there is no exhaust. But these rear tires, they are so close to the back end of this thing because this wheelbase is so stretched out. It's such a longer wheelbase that you typically find on Hondas. But anyhow, I do wanna mention that as well. Dang, those tires are wide. So these are the widest tires available for the Prologue. It's pretty cool. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the exterior portion. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the inside. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Prologue, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate for the touring and elite trim levels only. So that's pretty darn convenient. But I did want to also say there is a button on the key fob. You press that twice. There is a rubberized button on the tailgate itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity behind that second row comes in at 25.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, of course, the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 57.7 cubic feet then. There is a 12 volt power outlet back there. I did find LED cargo lighting as opposed to the halogen bulbs. That was pretty cool. Got some chrome plated tie down anchors, of course. And if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a little bit of in-floor storage as well. So I liked seeing that. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 39.4 inches, which is decent. Uh, for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the rear seats there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard. You got dual rear USB charging ports for all trim levels across the board. I love that as well. Of course, you got rear ventilation back there. And to my surprise, a 150 volt power outlet as well. So you could charge up a hair straightener or a drill or whatever the case. So that was pretty cool seeing that too. But then making our way up to the front seats, 10 way power driver seat with power lumbar does come standard. Power adjustable passenger seat for the touring and elite trim levels, heated front seats, you come standard ventilated front seats coming with the elite trim level only you will find a leather finish for the touring and elite memory settings also though for the touring and elite for up to two different drivers there overall seat comfort was okay a little bit on the stiff side but it shouldn't be anything that would personally bother me headrests though are perfectly comfortable i did like those but I don't know, I just maybe there's a little bit of room for improvement there. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped actually for the towing and elite trim levels. It is a little bit thicker of a steering wheel, but interestingly though, the 10 and two grips are pretty much the same kind of width as the rest of the steering wheel. So that was kind of different, but then taking a look at the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. This is definitely a new key. I don't remember seeing this from Honda before. You have this cool kind of elevated Honda logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate, the times two button, that's gonna be a remote start, so you gotta love that. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start, so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of those climate control vents there. But once started up, you're already looking at an 11 inch digital gauge cluster that does come standard and it looks pretty darn good. You got plenty of information that you need up there, like how many miles you have left until you run completely out of range. 
Uh, you got your tire pressure information up there, some radio information, there's speed limit recognition as well. So you can actually even choose to display a full navigation screen up there with a little digital speedometer if you wanted to. There's plenty of different loadouts actually. There's just a button on the right hand side of the steering wheel. You could adjust all those different loadouts. So plenty of different looks to it. So I like that too. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here. Panoramic moonroof coming with the touring and elite trim levels. Dual zone climate control does come standard illuminated door panels for the elite trim level only wireless phone charger though that is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board it is simply just a, a little slot you slide your phone in just behind the cup holders speaking of just in front of the cup holders you got a ton of rubberized storage you also have a 12 volt power outlet a couple usb charging ports uh, behind that wireless phone charger is the center armrest and you have a ton of storage within there so much storage within there so big fan of that and uh also just below all those cup holders of rubberized storage you have a little bit more hidden storage as well so that's something with uh electric vehicles you either completely they either completely do away with this middle section like the nissan aria for example and that's one route or you can go with this route where it kind of has the hidden storage honestly I think the hidden storage is probably better because if the passenger puts like a drink bottle on their side on the bottom, it could slide over to the driver's side and get under the pedals. So I kind of like this setup better for that particular reason at least. Interior quality is okay. It's nothing too crazy. I do like the piano or gloss black finish found uh, just above the passenger side glove box and surrounding all the uh, climate control buttons. They could have finished that in the matte black, but they didn't. They finished it in gloss black. Same thing for around the uh, window buttons found on the door here. They finished that in the gloss black as well. So it's okay. I definitely don't have any issues with it. But now let's go ahead and take a look at this massive infotainment screen. It comes in 11.3 inches. It is a color touchscreen display. Bluetooth and audio streaming wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you gotta love that. And there's honestly a ton of different information you could check out up here, like your ambient lighting colors, for example, and brightness for that matter. There's your climate control information. There's even your fog light buttons up here, which kind of threw me off for a second there, because I was, originally when I got in this one, I was looking for the headlight buttons and all that stuff, and I couldn't find them anywhere. It turns out a lot of what you're looking for is on this infotainment screen, after all. There's your navigation information up there as well and of course your radio information so when it comes to the sound systems there are two of them the ex trim level is going to give you six speakers but the toying and elite it's going to give you a 12 speaker bose sound system so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one yeah it's okay it's definitely a nice upgraded sound system there's plenty of bass there clarity was all right as well um, not the very craziest sound system I've ever heard, but uh, Bose is a very reputable company. I will say that. I've had Bose sound systems in my vehicles before. They've never failed me. Bose has been around for forever now, so definitely not a bad sound system for the Prologue. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put this one in reverse, you will find quite possibly the highest definition rear view camera I've ever seen. That is ridiculous. I love it. But also that 360 degree monitor or surround view monitor, whatever you want to call it, that comes with the elite trim level only, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, of course, Honda Sensing. So that gives you four Forward collision alert, automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot steering assist, side blind zone alert, lane change assist, rear cross traffic alert, rear cross traffic braking, and rear parking sensors as well. That's actually a ton. Well done, Honda, for that. And then on top of that, if you were to go with the touring or elite trims, you're going to get front and rear parking sensors. So that's pretty cool. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of this one, First off, plenty quick. Yes, there are quicker electric vehicles out there, but this one really is plenty quick. You get up to speed before you even realize you're going that fast. So that's one thing I always love about electric cars. They're so ridiculously quick, but also a very quiet cabin, very luxury-like as far as cabin quietness goes. So big fan of that. As far as room for improvement goes, I will say some of the tech was a little bit confusing. Maybe it's just that I'm not used to this particular kind of setup. I, Honda setup traditionally with infotainment screens, it's wonderful. Uh, but this one, I guess maybe this is barred from GM possibly, but it is 
kind of confusing. Like you just got random icons with uh, just random different shapes. Like what is a rectangle and two squares? Let me go ahead and hit that because I really don't know. It's just the random stuff like that that makes absolutely no sense. You don't have those kind of icons on Android devices. You don't have those icons on uh, Apple devices either. So it's just like, what in the world are they? I don't know, a little bit confusing there for me. And that kind of leads me into the next thing. It is missing some of its Honda-ness, if that's a word, on the inside specifically. I actually really like the design of the exterior. So uh, Honda, if you're watching this, don't change the exterior, that looks amazing. But the inside, it's missing some Honda-ness. Honda to me kind of has this kind of racing DNA and this just looks bland, like just a regular SUV like you would find from I don't know, let's say GM. <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the prologue in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen, if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Stay gold.